you hear that? Starting with version 2.3 of the Oracle mobile application framework, it is possible to build and run your apps on Windows machines. In this video, I will show you how to set up your development environment to get started. My name is Frédéric Desbiens and I'm a member of the Oracle mobile platform team. By design, Math is a cross-platform framework. From the very first version, it has been possible to run Math applications on both iOS and Android. Over time, we expanded our platform support to 64-bit CPUs and, in the case of Android, to chips using Intel instruction sets as well. Math 2.3 once again expands the reach of Math by adding support for Windows as a target operating system. To be more specific, we enable Math applications to be packaged as Universal Windows Platform Applications or UWP. The great news about this is that you can run your math apps not only on Windows tablets, but also on PCs. No emulators to start, isn't that great? However, UWP apps are specific to Windows 10. Previous versions of Windows that are still supported by Microsoft, such as Windows 7 and Windows 8.1, cannot run UWP apps. Also, at this stage, Math does not support Windows 10 Mobile as a target operating system. Most Windows 10 mobile devices use ARM processors anyway. For the time being, math apps packaged to the UWP format require processors compatible with the x86 or x64 instruction sets. This includes hundreds of millions of PCs as well as the vast majority of Windows tablets and convertibles currently in the market. Getting your workstation ready to package your math apps for Windows is a fairly straightforward four-step process. First, you must install the tools. Then, you must create a personal information exchange file and install it on your machine. Finally, you must enable development mode in order to be able to run your apps on your local machine. Now, let's have a closer look at each one of those steps. As I said before, UWP apps will run on Windows 10 only. So it will probably not surprise you if I say that you need to run Windows 10 to build UWP apps as well. Moreover, you need to install Visual Studio 2015 in order to have the Microsoft tools you need. You can use any edition of Visual Studio, including the free community edition. However, when you install it, ensure that you install the Windows 10 SDK and its associated command line tools. Things can get a bit confusing in the installer, so let me show you a screenshot. As you can see, I selected two options in the new Universal Windows App Development Tools category. I explicitly deselected the emulators for Windows 10 Mobile category. If you install them by mistake, be aware that those rely on Hyper-V virtualization. If you use Oracle VirtualBox, Hyper-V will interfere with it and it will have to be disabled before VirtualBox can work again. By the way, make sure you have plenty of disk space. This specific install required more than 17 gigabytes on my hard drive. And to think some still complain JDev is too big. Speaking of JDeveloper, with version 2.3, Math moves to JDeveloper 12.2.1, also known as 12C Release 2. Remember you can have multiple versions of JDeveloper on the same machine. This means you can keep a copy of 12.1.3 to support apps based on older releases of Math. For example, please note JDev 12.2.1 requires JDK 8, which means your environment will be a bit simpler than before once you get rid of JDev 12.1.3. Finally, once JDeveloper is installed, you need to add the math extension to it from the online update center or from a local zip file. All right, the tools are installed. Step two is to create a personal information exchange or .pfx file. Essentially, a PFX file can be seen as a digital certificate packaged in a specific fashion. To create one, you need to use the command line. Let me show you how to do that. Creating a PFX file is a two-step process. The first step is to use the makecert.exe command to generate a private key file .pvk and x509 certificate .cer. Makecert is part of the Windows 10 SDK. You need to run the command from the appropriate folder, which is C 
Programmed Files x86, Windows Kits 10, bin x64 by default. Here is how you should use MakeCert. The first argument, minus SV, is the patent file name of the private key. In this case, I picked v, oracle, math.pvk. The second argument, minus n, is the name of the certificate. The syntax is this one. cn is your name. ou is the organizational unit. o is the organization's name. c is the country. The third argument, minus r, means that the certificate is self-signed, which is fine for development purposes. Never use such a certificate for a production application. The fourth argument, minus h0, specifies that the certificate cannot be used as a certification authority that can issue other certificates. The fifth argument, minus eku, configures the possible usages for the private key. Here, the value is made of two flags separated by a comma. The first flag, 136155733, indicates that the certificate can be used to sign code. The second flag, 136141301103313, indicates that the certificate respects lifetime signing. At the very end of the command, you must specify the path and file name for the certificate. In my case, I picked vOracleMath.cer. When you press Enter to run the command, you will get a dialog box asking you to supply a password for the private key. After that, you will get a second dialog asking you for the password. This is required since the program needs to access the key in order to create the certificate. That's all for the MakeCert command. The second step of the process is to use pvk2 pfx.exe to copy the key and certificate information to a pfx file. Here is the syntax. The first argument, minus pvk, is the patent file name of the private key to use. In this case, I picked vOracleMath.pvk. The second argument, minus spc, is the patent file name of the certificate file. For me, this is vOracleMath.cer. The third argument, minus pfx, is the path and file name you desire for the pfx file. I picked v oracle math minus fd dot pfx. The fourth argument is minus pi. This is the password for the key file. The last argument is minus po. This is the password for the certificate file. When you run the command, there will be no dialogues or messages. However, there should be a pfx file at the location you specified. Now I have a valid pfx file. The next step is to install that file on my development workstation. When I say install, this is in fact adding the contents of the pfx to a specific certificate store on a Windows 10 machine. Let me show you how. To start the import process, all I need to do is to double-click on the pfx file I want to import. This launches the certificate import wizard. You will need to run the wizard three times in total. The first step in the wizard is used to specify the location of the identity store the certificate will be imported in. For the first run of the wizard, I select current user. The second step of the wizard is used to specify the location of the pfx file. The default value is fine since I launched the wizard by double-clicking the file. In the third step, I need to enter the password for the pfx file. Please ensure that the third checkbox labeled include all extended properties is checked and that the other two are not. At the fourth step, select the option to place all certificates in the following store and click on the browse button. For this first run, I select the personal store. The last step of the wizard just recaps the choices I made. I click on the finish button to import the certificate. After that, I need to run the wizard two other times. The first time, I need to select the current user location and the trusted people certificate store. 
The second time, I need to select the local machine location and the Trusted People Certificate Store. OK, now I have imported the certificate everywhere it is needed. The only thing that remains is to enable development mode on my PC. By default, Windows 10 will execute UWP apps only if they have been installed from the Windows Store or if they come from a trusted source. Since the certificate I imported is self-signed, my apps will not run by default. This is why I need to activate developer mode on my machine. To activate developer mode, open the settings application from the start menu. You can also do this from the Windows Notifications Center. In the settings application, select the update and security category, then open the for developers section. Select the developer mode option, which will enable your apps to run. With that, you are nearly ready to build and run math apps on your Windows machine. There is one small last thing you need to do inside JDeveloper. Open the JDeveloper preferences and go to the math section. You will see there is a new entry for the Windows platform. You need to specify the location of the Windows SDK at the top of the screen, as well as the location of your PFX file and its password at the bottom. You can use the same PFX for the development and release modes if you are running apps just on your workstation. If you plan to distribute your app to run on other devices, you will probably have to use a PFX suited for that usage. That is, one relying on a certificate issued by a trusted authority. And now, that's really it. I can run a math app on my Windows 10 PC. Behold, work better, running even faster than on my iPad. I do not have a touch screen, but gestures and other tablet interactions are fully supported if the device supports them. Windows 10 support opens a whole new world of opportunities for math developers. Moreover, it has the potential to significantly improve your productivity if you are using a PC, since you don't need to start an emulator to test or run your apps. Whether your app targets Windows or not, you win. Thank you for watching and please do this at home.